Agora TV. The world is thinking. One of the features that I am trying to make um, is that a game designer would be nominated for a Nobel Peace Prize by the year 2023. And we, we are at Wonderfest, and uh, you know, this is something I actually sit awake at night wondering a lot. Is this possible? Is this a crazy idea? Uh, it probably sounds like a crazy idea if you're used to thinking of games as being an escape from reality, as being something that we play when we don't want to deal with all the problems we have in our real lives. But scientific research is actually showing that increasingly games are changing the way that we solve problems and changing the way we think about who we really are and how we live our real lives. Um, now, it's not a surprise that games are having a profound effect on us because, as you heard from Dr. Zimbardo, it does appear that young people in this country today are amassing 10,000 hours of gaming by the age of 21. This is true for 99% of boys and 94% of girls. So um, there's not as much a gender gap with this uh, generation as we've seen in the past. And uh, kind of makes you wonder, does 10,000 hours of playing computer and video games have side effects? So I thought I would gather up some of the most interesting research from the past couple of years, looking at how games impact our real lives to see what some of those side effects might be. So you've probably heard a lot uh, in the media about games and violence. Does, do playing violent video games increase aggression in real life or increase hostility, um, particularly in kids? We're very worried about that with kids. Um, so, uh, a group of scientists uh, from nine different universities in Japan, Malaysia, in the US, in the Netherlands, in Canada, they decided to look into the opposite question. Does playing games in which you are cooperative or helpful uh, actually change your behavior in the real world? So they were looking at games that we in the industry call pro-social gaming. These are games where your character is asked to do things that are actually helpful to other people rather than you know, shooting somebody or fighting with them. You're actually doing something um, on their behalf. So a great example of that is Super Mario Sunshine. That's a game where you land on an island that's been polluted and your mission is to clean up the island for the residents who are there. Um, and so you're actually helping them. And so the studies, uh, the scientists in the study looking at pro-social gaming, they use games like this and they found that having a kid, uh, and they looked at all age groups, um, very young, middle school, high school, having them play a game like this actually increased threefold the amount of time or likelihood that they would spend helping someone in the real world in the following week. So just 30 minutes of playing a pro-social video game actually increased threefold the amount of time they spent helping a family member clean up a mess or uh, helping a, a friend with homework or helping uh, a neighbor with a chore. So it kind of makes you wonder. We've heard for a long time in the media that games bring out the worst in us, but in fact these studies are showing that is it possible that these games could actually bring out the best in us. That would be an interesting side effect. This study was looking at the genre of games called music video games. Um, this is a collaboration uh, with, uh, with the people who make Guitar Hero and Rock Band and also uh, scientists at University of Washington. And they wanted to find out, were these games having an impact on people's desire and willingness to play music in real life, right? Because a lot of people thought when these games first came out that you know, we're gonna have all these young people who are gonna learn how to play virtual guitars and they're never going to pick up a real guitar. So they studied two groups of gamers who had bought Rock Band or Guitar Hero. Um, gamers who had never played one of these musical instruments in their real lives and gamers who already owned one of these musical instruments so they had a guitar at home or they had drums at home. So what they found out is that 77% of the gamers who did not uh, own one of these instruments already had been inspired to actually go out and pick up and play one of these instruments for the first time, a real instrument. So more than three quarters of gamers who were playing these music genre games actually went on to play a real musical instrument, to at least get their hands on it for the first time.